Hello everyone and welcome to the second day's Watch Me Bids. Today we have Andy Kribbel, who's going to be going through how many tips, Andy? We'll find out. Uh, in undetermined number of tips are new tableau, live on screen here. So if you're in the data playground and you're waiting for your lunch, um, learn something while you're awake or while you talk and relax and I'll announce the tips as they go. And over to you, Andy. Okay, thank you, Sophie. So uh, I decided to do this because Sophie didn't let me talk yesterday. So it's her fault that you have to listen to me. Um, actually, this is going to be this. This is going to be a, uh, a a dry run for a session that we're going to be Jeff Schaefer and I are going to do in Austin uh, called uh, Tableau Speed Tipping. It's going to be fifty tips in fifty minutes. So um, I'm just I just have some notes. I'm just going to run through things. It's very haphazard. But hopefully you learn something along the way. If you do learn something, shout out or something so Sophie can keep track of things that people learn. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing is I decided that um, I needed a really crappy dashboard to get us started. So we're calling this one Sophie's Choice since Sophie's standing right here. Um, she didn't actually build this. And um, I did this because I want to show you guys some, some really neat, neat things that I've learned in Tableau along the way. So first off, um, Sophie prefers Comic Sans for her titles uh, and all kinds of crazy fonts. Um, she did at least use color association for grapes, strawberries, bananas, and oranges, so that's good. Um, and by the way, this is all just superstore sales. So um, I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks. So the first thing you'll notice is it doesn't fit very well in the screen. So a tip that Molly Monsi showed me when I was doing Tableau Train the Trainer is um, if you want your dashboard to fit uh, your laptop well so that it fits everybody's well. Uh, a neat little trick is to go to the size option in your dashboards and first change it from fixed size to automatic. And you'll see that fits my screen perfectly now. And But never ever leave a dashboard in automatic because Tableau will re-render based on the size of the device. But the trick is once it's on automatic, switch it back to fixed size and then you're done. So now it fits perfectly in your screen. So that's tip number one. So um, next is, so Sophie likes her Comic Sans, but uh, you know, let's say that she sent this to me and I need to, I need to do it over. Now a good way to know how to, that when somebody has changed something in a workbook is through the formatting menu. So I'm gonna go up to Format Dashboard. And one of the things you'll notice in every format pane on the left-hand side, uh, if you ever see something that is in bold, so can you notice how, I forget how I zoom on my computer, so I won't do it, but the word dashboard is in bold right there. You guys see that? That means that it's no longer the default. So that's Tableau's uh, visual cue to you that something has been changed in, in from the default formats. So if you ever want to get rid of the defaults, just right click on the bold word and choose clear, and that gets rid of your defaults. So that's a neat little trick. Um, so I'm going to do that for both the, the uh, dashboard shading and for the font. So that sets it back to the default font for the dashboard. So, uh, and then I could also do it for the worksheets. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into this worksheet. And you'll notice how she's got grapes, strawberries, bananas, and oranges. Well, she's got this calculated field called fruits. And if I look at that calculated field, it's just a copy of ship mode. Right, so ship modes are what express, I don't know, does anybody know what they are off the top of your head? Everybody's familiar with superstore sales, whatever they are. But let's say that we actually, so Sophie did this because she was trying to trick us. So what we really want to do is we want the aliases to go, uh, to go back. So if you right click on a field and you go down to aliases, what you could do is click this clear aliases button. But let's say, let's pretend you have a list of about 500 of them. You don't want to have to go through and let's say you only want to change four or five of them. So if I make this, I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. What you can do is, you see how it says first class has been renamed to bananas, same day to oranges, etc. So what you can do is you can go into your alias, delete it, hit enter, and that resets it. So that's the quickest way to reset a single alias at a time. All right, so now, uh, I don't know which one that is. So bananas are now first class bananas. So that's good. You like first class bananas. Okay, so that should be, uh, let's see, I think that's three so far. 
Um, another thing that I like to do is when, uh, when I have a line chart, for example, so let me actually build a new sheet here, because that's not really the, oh wait, that's a new dashboard. I'm not familiar with the buttons yet. Okay, so let's just do something simple like order date by month, and let's just look at sales. And you have a nice little chart, something like that. And uh, I'm going to throw this into my dashboard. Where's my dashboard? And sheet four. So I'm just going to stick it here. And you notice how Tableau always puts a border on everything. So I like it when the borders aren't there. But I still like my borders to be on the left-hand side and the bottom. So to do that, you just right-click and choose Format. And uh, first thing I do is I go over to my Borders option. And I get rid of my row divider and my column divider. All right, so now I have nothing in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the lines option, and I'm going to set my axis rulers to a single line. And oops, I don't know why that popped up. A single line, and then maybe like a light gray to try to match Tableau. So now I have just, and if I click out of that, you can see now I just have borders on the left and the uh, on the sides. So. That's a neat way to kind of make your, your charts look a little bit cleaner. Okay. Um, so let's go into this sheet here. Where is it? Uh, daily sales. All right. So you notice how I've got a trend line on here? Can you guys see that trend line? So how many of you right-click on a trend line and choose uh, – where is it? I can't even see it. There's no, like, remove option, right? Or let's, let's do it a different way. Let's put an average line on here. And this, this tip actually comes from Rob, Rob Radburn's eight-year-old son. So um, if I put a reference, an average reference line on each of the sections, how many of you right-click on it and choose remove? How many people do it that way? I've always done it that way. Does anybody know a better way? Well, you do now, right? So the easiest way that, again, Rob's eight-year-old son, you can just drag these off. Does anybody know you can do that? Yeah. Anyway, I think that's a pretty cool one. So how many is that now? Are you losing count? Five, that's only five? No, I'm, I'm losing it. Um, and you can do the same thing with the trend line. So I can just grab the trend line and drag that off as well. So it works for both reference lines and trend lines. Does that count as two or one? Just one? Okay. All right. So yesterday, Wasim showed us how to build donut charts. So I'm going to show you that again as well. And this is... Generally, the only time I ever use pie charts, or uh, that I ever use show me, sorry, because I don't know how to build pie charts. So I like to hover over the pie chart option. It says any one or more dimensions and one or two measures. Okay, so what I want to do is let's say that we want to look at, oh, no, wait, I'm going to flip over to a different data set. So this data set is, um, so at the data school, I track where they sit every day. So um, it's kind of stalkerish, but that's okay. It gives me some interesting data to play with. So this is how often they sit in their favorite seat. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just drag their names out to the columns. And I've got two measures here, one for the percent of time they spent in that seat, and then the other measure is one minus that, basically. So I want to take those, and I'm going to take measure names and put that onto the color shelf, change this to a pie. I'm actually not going to use show me. And I think I need to put measure values onto the angle. And this is going to mess it all up. So I need to drag number of records out. OK, so we've got something like that now. And I'm going to choose fit width. OK, so uh, again, you can drag, you can rearrange things in measure names just by dragging them around. So I want the percent of time to be first and then everything else. So to turn this into a donut, I'm going to just double click in my row shelf and just type in a zero. And that gives me uh, an axis. And then I'm going to just duplicate that and then make it a dual axis. And then from here, make sure you're always on a dual axis. Make sure you always synchronize. And then on my secondary, uh, my second marks card, I'm going to remove everything and make this a circle and then make it maybe white and make it smaller than the other one. So that's how you make a donut really quick. And what I like to do then is to take the percent of time, stick it on the label, and it looks like I need to format this. So default, number format, percentage, no decimals. And then what I'll do is I'll stick this in the middle. So I'll go to alignment and set middle, middle, and then it sticks it right in the middle of the donut. So, uh, and usually I end up 
futzing around with the size a little bit. So make that a little bigger and then go to my second one and make that a little smaller. Okay, so something like that. So this is where everybody's favorite seat is. Um, but one thing you'll notice is the names are at the bottom. So wouldn't it be really nice if the names were at the top instead? Does everybody want that feature in Tableau? Well, it's already there. So what you do is you go up to the analysis menu, you go to, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, oh, it's moved. Uh, table layout, advanced. And there's this option here for show innermost level at bottom of the view, whatever that means. Just untick that box, hit OK, and now your labels are at the top. So I think that's pretty freaking brilliant. So that's Jeff Schaefer found that one. Um, so that one's pretty fun. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. And instead of having the percentages in the middle, I'm going to have their faces. So I already have shapes that are circles. So I took all of their profile pictures and I turned them into little, you know, transparent background circles. So I'm going to go to my secondary shelf and change this to a shape. I'm going to remove that. I don't care about that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put their name on the shape shelf. And you'll see I've already pre-assigned their pictures. So now you can make nice little, so if you have salespeople, you want to put their little pictures inside of donut charts, um, that's how you do it. All right. And then what I would do from here. So one of the things you'll notice is when I hover over Alex, it doesn't show me the percentage of time he spent in that seat. So I'm going to go to the all marks card and drag this percent of time to the tooltip. And when you do it on the all marks card, it shows up no matter where you're hovering. So I can hover over Alex and it says Alex percent of time 50%. And then it says zero, zero. So the reason that zero, zero is there is because zero is in my view. Well, I could go into tooltip and, you know, choose to delete this out, but that takes too much time. So Carl Alchin showed me this one. You can, you can, uh, on any field, you can come down and untick the include and tooltip and then it's gone. So that's a nice little time saver. So thank you, Carl, for that, wherever you are. Um, you're, okay, thank you. He's back there. Yeah, he's all chin. Um, okay, so that's, uh-oh, my phone died. Let me see. I'm going to make a lot of this up as we go. Okay, so the next one Sophie wanted me to show you is how to put a line on top of an area chart. So I'll go back to Superstore Sales, and let's just look at, um, let's just look at maybe sales by month. And I'm going to make this a moving average. Let's make it a moving average. And I'm going to edit my calculation. So you see it defaults to a moving average. I want to make it a six-month moving average, so I'm going to put a five in here. And I put a five in here because it's including the current value. That means six. So it's the current value plus the five previous ones. So I see people make that mistake all the time. So um, people tend to count too much. So I'm going to leave it like that and change it to, come on. That. change it to an area chart but what I'd like is to have kind of a bolder line go along the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the field make this one a line and then just make it a dual axis synchronize again don't forget to synchronize and then sometimes what I'll do on this one is I'll go ahead and turn the little dots on on the lines so now you've got your nice little uh, option there all right so is that what you wanted to see Okay, I like that one. And you could even change the colors. So sometimes I'll make this one like a light gray, or maybe that's a little too light, but maybe like a light gray and then a black line or something like that. So whatever you like. All right. Uh, okay. So how many of you were in Jesse Gebhardt's dashboarding session yesterday? Okay. So there was a question at the end that came up about can you zoom in? Can you allow a user to zoom in on an axis? So the answer is yes. So I'd never done it before, but I figured it out about right after, right after, and I made a, I made a video of it, so you can go to my blog and, and watch it if you want, but I'll show you how to do it. So the example was, uh, what we want to do is, I'll just, again, I'll just start with maybe, maybe we just want to look at, or I think he was using average discount, right? So a lot of times what are used, what you'll do is you'll untick include zero, and that zooms the axis in. But really, what you want your users to be able to do is kind of toggle back and forth between those two views. All right? Make sense? Yes? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward, and I'm going to create a parameter. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it Zoom. Always hard to type when people are watching. And I'm going to make it a string parameter, and it's just going to be yes or no. Hit OK. And then I'm going to show my parameter. 
over here. And I need to move this guy out of the way. And I'm just going to make it a single value list. And right now, when I use the parameter, it doesn't do anything. Parameters never do anything until you tell Tableau what to do with them. So I need to create a calculated field. And I'm going to call it zoom value. And I'm going to say if zoom oops, is equal to no, then zero, else null. And I forgot my quotes. OK. So you probably doesn't make sense so far, but it will in a minute. So I'm going to drag that onto the detail shelf. And you'll see I now have my zoom value. Again, I'm going to, I don't want it on the tooltip. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a reference line to trick Tableau into drawing the bottom of the axis. So I'm going to drag a reference line on for average discount across the table. And when the little window pops up, I'm going to change this to zoom value, turn my label off, turn my line off, and untick the recalculate. Hit OK. And now when I say don't zoom, it zooms back out. So zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. So you can use reference lines that way. So when I when I am not, when I'm zoomed out, you'll see I actually can, I thought that I had said not to show the value. So it should be none. Okay, there we go. So it's kind of invisible to the users. So hopefully they don't click on it, but even if they do, it doesn't mean anything. So that's how you can zoom in or out. So, uh, so that was pretty fun to figure out. I like those kind of challenges. All right. How much time do we have? It's only 12. I got 12 more minutes. Okay. Um, we're moving right. Okay. So yesterday, or I'm sorry, uh, Monday, Sophie wanted to know how to build a diverging bar chart, right? So uh, why don't I just go ahead and connect to that data set? Uh, let me find it here. It's under Makeover Monday, and then data. And it was female corporate talent pipeline, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Oh boy. All right, now I'm just going to go to a new sheet. And what she wanted to do is, first off, I'm going to change this to discrete. And I think we're looking at just 2015. Yeah, so OK, so I'm going to filter to just 2015. And we have the level of the position. And I'm going to change my default sort here. And just going to change these manually. So you can drag these around. I think it goes, that looks about right. OK. And let's just make an entire view just to make it easier to see. And then what she wanted to do was be able to you create a shared axis view and then drag measure names to the color. Well, now these are overlapping. What she wanted was females to go to the left and males to go to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a calculated field on female. And I'm just going to call it female minus. And I'm just going to stick a minus sign in front of the female. And then I'm going to format that default properties number format. I'm going to go to percentage zero and then go down to my custom and I'm going to put zero. I'm going to put a semicolon and then zero percent. That way it always, it's almost like an absolute value type of type of look. So hit OK. And now I'm going to take that and replace my female and we get a nice little diverging chart. So just like that. Uh, and it says female minus, you could edit the alias and make it a space if you want or something like that, but good enough. But then she wanted to be able to show the percentages inside the ends of each bar. So this is where reference lines become really handy. So I'm going to, um, I think we did it with reference lines. Yeah. So we're going to drag a, re a cell level reference line on. And I'm going to use, oops, so I did that wrong. So again, I, I need to leverage both my male and female fields, so I need to put those into my uh, into my detail shelf. Okay, so let me try that again. Reference line cell. And the first one I want to do is the female. And my label is going to be the value. Uh, I don't want a line. I don't want it to recalculate. Okay, so that shows up over here. And I'm going to edit that line. Or sorry, wrong option there. I want to format that line. And I'm going to do, we want to do it center. Oh, no, I'm sorry, to the right. And we want to do it to the middle. And then make the shading, no shading. And I think we made the font like, you know, maybe 14 white or something like that. Okay? So now you can see the label inside the end. And then you just rinse and repeat for the males. So we'll take the males, put that on. I'm sorry, drag another reference line on. This time we're going to choose male. 
we'll do you know, line only, or the label should be the value, no formatting, okay. And then uh, format, and I need to make this again, I think I chose what I choose, 16, something like that. And my alignment this time is going to be on the left middle. And then my numbers are going to be percentages. All right, so now you've, oops, and I forgot my shading, so let me, fun. This is when it gets hard to pick the reference line. Okay, so my shading should be zero. All right, and I think that's it. And then this reference line, I don't know why that's in here, so I'm just gonna remove that. So that's how you can put the labels inside the ends of a diverging bar chart. Uh, let's see, sorry, I'm trying to keep going. Um, how about, has anybody seen DNA charts before? Do you know what those are? Okay, so we could do that. We'll do it with the same data set. So let's say we want to look at, uh, am I on the same data set yet? So let's just look at both years, and I wanna look at females compared to males. I'm gonna do create a combined axis by dropping it on there, I get two rulers. I'm gonna change, the, wait, am I doing this wrong? I think I'm doing this wrong. Uh, I am doing this wrong. Okay, so this is when you hit this little clear sheet option because it helps you start over. And I'm going to skip to another tip because I forget how to do that off the top of my head. Um, okay. Uh, okay, let's do another fun one. Let's do, a, let's go back to the seeding data set. I don't know, let's do analytics. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Superstore. And does everybody know how to create lollipop charts? Does anybody know how to create lollipop charts? Okay. Well, we'll do them anyway, even if you don't have So I'm gonna drag customer segment into the, let's put it in the columns. Let's put sales in the rows. And to create a lollipop chart, you just duplicate it and you make it dual axis. Where to go, dual axis. And synchronize. And then you just sort of play around with your marks card. So on my first one, I'm gonna make it a line, I'm sorry, a bar, and make it really thin. And then I've got a lollipop. So now I can control, maybe on this second one, I wanna put maybe profit ratio on the color. So you can do something like that. So uh, that's how you do a lollipop chart. I could instead maybe make this, um, I could make these shapes if I wanted to. And I could maybe, uh, if I drag my customer segment to the shape, I could then, where's my shape shelf? I could maybe put some data schooler faces on here just because they're not here. So I can, oh. Take that off color. There we go. So now you put people's faces on the ends of the lollipops. That's kind of fun, right? Uh, how about using an all? Does anybody know how to include all in a parameter? Anybody? Everybody done that before? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Let me see if I can remember how to do this one on the fly. So um, let's say that we have uh, order date. Let's look at it by month. Um, and then I want to do sales, and I want this to be a running total, and I want to see every state on there. So I'm basically comparing all of my states, and what I want to be able to do is highlight the state. Now, the highlighter feature in Tableau kind of takes care of this, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So I'm going to right-click on state and choose create parameter, and first thing I'm going to do is clear all, and I'm going to add an all option at the top, and I put it in brackets to make it look like it's a real all option. And then I'm gonna do add from field, sample superstore, and state. So now I've got all of my things in there. Hit okay. And I have a parameter called state. So what I wanna do now is I wanna highlight the state if they pick it, um, or if they pick all, make them all blue. So either they're all blue or one of them is blue. So I need to create a calculated field, and I'm gonna say highlight state. Oh, no typos there, that was pretty good. And what I wanna do here is I wanna say state parameter, is equal to state uh, state or state parameter equals and then my all option. All right. And notice I didn't put if then else. This just returns a boolean, yes or no, right? True or false. And then I can drag that to my color shelf. And so when I switch it to Alabama, you'll see Alabama. Let's see. I need to switch these around. And what I'll do is I'll make my false gray, and uh, so now you can see Alabama sticking out down there, and when I reorder them, the one that I picked for the color is always in front, and if I switch it back to all, then they're all the same color, 
So that's how you can use an all parameter. Um, and I've got three more minutes. Um, how about dynamic dashboard titles? Yes. All right. So let's say that we have Sophie's Choice dashboard. And um, what I want to do is I want to I want to put in here maybe the region that she filters to, something like that. So um, let me go to sheet four here, and I'm going to add re where's region? Uh, region. I'm going to add region as a filter, and just choose central. And I'm going to apply that to all using this data source. And then uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to go to my dashboard. And I'm going to show my, where is it, filter region. And it's OK there. And what I want to do is I want to remove the all options. So I want her to force, force her to pick just one at a time. So I'm going to change this to a um, list. OK. So now when she picks through, it filters nice and neat. But what, what I'd really like is I would like to say, like, Sophie's central choice or Sophie's so whatever, something like that. So when I go into my title, there's no way for me to insert a filter in here. So what you have to do is create a new sheet. And in this new sheet, I'm going to just put a uh, region on the detail shelf. And then I'm going to make this, um, I can leave it as a mark, it doesn't matter. And what I want to do now is choose color and make it transparent and then make it as small as possible. All right. And I'm going to clean up the view by getting rid of my borders. Let's see, not grand totals. So none and none. So now it kind of looks like a blank sheet. And sometimes I'll actually change it to a text. Okay, so there we go. So that's better. So now what I can do is I can double click on my title and I can call this Sophie's Choice. Ah, in the, and then insert uh, region, region, something like that. Maybe make the whole thing nice and big. So she likes 36 point Comic Sans font. So we'll leave it like that. So now I have this new sheet and I'll call this my, I like to call this my title sheet. And then what I can do is I can push, push this title sheet up here into my little container and then kill this one and make this, oops, make this fit the entire view. And now when she picks a region, it looks like a dynamically changing dashboard title. So, but it's actually just the worksheet. So that's 1259 and that is it. Thank you very much.